So you remember how in the last problem we kept saying with summary for both stack crunch and with the calculator for how we wanted to do that confidence interval. So I thought it would be helpful to be see an example that doesn't go with a summary but uses data instead. So here I have the a random sample of NBA players from the 2019-2020 season. There were 514 NBA players total for that season, but this is just a sample of some of them. So first of all, what is the sample and what is its size? So it was random NBA players and its size is, well, I didn't give it to you this time. You're going to have to count. So there's four rows and there's one, two, three, four, five columns. So it was 20 random NBA players. Technically from the 2019 to 2020 season. Sorry, my pen was dying there for a second. It's in the 2019 to 20 season. And the population would be all NBA players from the 2019 to 2020 season. All right, now before we can even make our interval, we need to verify that our requirements are met. Otherwise, there's no point in doing any of this. So step one, we would need to know that it's random. Is it starting to be sound familiar, <laughs> right? So this is yes, because it's given. Step two, we would need to know independent. But that will be, of course, yes. Now this is the hardest one to prove. It's because n, little n, which was 20, is less than 0.05 of capital N, which is 0.05 of 514. Now we have to prove that. So let me grab the calculator here. 0 0.05 times 514. And again, you could do this on Desmos if you don't have a TI-84. I just grabbed the, that calculator because it's right there. All right, so 25.7. And so this is yes, right? We did it. We proved that 20 was indeed less than 5% of all of the NBA players for that season. And then normal, this will be a little bit different. We don't have greater than 30, but it's still a yes. And it's because those points are linear. Remember that hardest section from chapter seven. That was a joke, right? It was the easiest section, right? It's because the points on the normal probability plot are linear. And they don't have to be perfectly linear, but they are. <laughs> they're, they're very close to linear on this particular graph. Great, so our conditions are met. That means we are go for the next bit, which is the formula substitution and result, <laughs> right, where all the work is. All right, so formula, substitution, results. I know how this is going to go. All right, so the formula. Well, the formula was on the previous page. It hasn't changed because we're still doing a confidence interval for a mean. So I'm just going to grab it. It's also on your exam notes packet, actually, which I haven't shown you yet. So I can do that. It's right here. Just as before in 9-1, there's no need to memorize it, no need to put it on your note sheet yourself because it's already on the exam notes packet you're given. And for our purposes, we really want that right hand one. The left hand one is more just keeping the idea of what's happening. So it's x bar plus or minus t alpha over 2 times s over the square root of n. And again, that dot might not be in there, but that's implied. There's a multiplication. The alpha over 2 is just a subscript that's labeling the t. Okay, well, I don't know what any of those values are. Oh, wait, I take it back. <laughs> I know that um, that I'm going to have division by the square root of 20. That, that part I know because I already counted. <laughs> but that's it. I don't know what anything else is. Hmm. Well, long time ago, we actually learned how to find x bar and s from a data set. Right? So those values we can still find if we have the data. Now... I actually put these data into StatCrunch and I made it a publicly available data set. Let me drag this larger. So I called it, I'm going to click on it right here so you'll be able to see it, MAT133 Fall 20, 9.2 Example 4, X4, 
at MBA weights. So if you start searching for MAT133 NBA, you'll probably find both the, the large data set that I drew it from, there's the full data set that's also public, as well as this particular one. So if you kind of search for some of those words, you should be able to find it. I'll actually make it an active link for future. Okay, so there's that data set. So I have them right here. Do you remember how to find summary statistics? <laughs> so you go to stat, summary stat, columns, you click on columns and then you say I want MBA player weights so you click on that and I really just need the mean the standard deviation the n that's all I need out of this so I'm, I'm gonna grab those three things so I just did that by holding down my control button while I clicked on the three things that I wanted and I click compute and there we have it so the X bar is 207.95 the S is 17.957. So here, this is 207.95. This is 17.957. So that gave me two of them and it verified I was correct. N is 20. On the calculator, you would have to go enter that data. So you'd have to go to stat, edit, clear out your old columns, and you'd have to type in your data points. So you'd have to go type in 235, 225, 210, and so on. I'm going to pause this, and I'm going to enter all those values, and I'll be right back. There's a reason I'm doing this, though, and it'll, it'll help us when we do the t-interval. One second. It's also a good review. So once you have those data points in there, stat, calculate, one variable. You do not want a frequency list. That's only for section 3.3 and 6.1. So you just want list L1 calculate and there they are and it verifies the answers that we got out of StatCrunch. Again, you do not have to do both of these things. Just do whichever one of these two makes you happy. So if you're happier in StatCrunch, use StatCrunch. If you're happier with the calculator, use the calculator. Unless your instructor requires one or the other. All right, so there's that. Now what about that T alpha over 2? That's always a lot of work. So remember that n was 20. So degrees of freedom is 19, right? It's n minus 1. Why am I doing that? Well, because then I also notice that I have a 95% confidence level. So that means that alpha is 0 0.05 and alpha over 2, which the formula tells us to use, is 0 0.0025. Now this purple part you only need if you're using the calculator or the table. If you're using the calculator or the table, you have to figure this out. If you're using StatCrunch, you do not. Because StatCrunch, I can just go to stat, actually let me close that, I'll just leave it, stat, and then I want T, oh, excuse me, calculators, I'm going for the calculator, so stat, calculator, T, right there, and then I'll say choose between, so I clicked on between, I tell it the degrees of freedom is 19, and I tell it the area is 0.95, enter, and there you have it, so T is 2.093. And again, it could be the negative or the positive. It doesn't matter because the formula takes care of it. So it's 2.093. If you use the calculator to do it, you'd have to do second distribution. Oh, I put too many zeros in there. Hold on. Inverse T, which is number four. And I just realized I have too many zeros. It's 0, 0.00 is wrong. <laughs> it's only 0 0.05, so it's 0 0.025. Sorry about that. So it'd be 0 0.025, my degrees of freedom is 19. I would paste it in and press enter. And it'll give me a negative answer, but that's okay. It's the 2.093. So that worked out great. All right, now how about the final results? So for the final results in the calculator, or excuse me, in StatCrunch, I can go to, I can just close these windows. I don't need to see these anymore. So let me close that. And let me close that. So I have a column of data here. So if I go to stat, t stat, and I choose one sample, but this time I choose with data because I have data for this problem. So I'll click with data. I'll click on NBA player weights. I'll go here to the confidence interval and click on that. The hypothesis test, by the way, is chapter 10. So that stuff's coming for you. <laughs> Give me time. All right, and then my confidence level was 0.95. So that worked out great, All right? The most common one. And then I'll click Compute, although if you'd like, you can actually see a QQ plot. Um, that is the normal probability plot, if you're interested. So I can click Compute, 
and there you see, and this time it actually gave me two outputs. So it's giving me the confidence interval right there, and if I click on the little arrow, there's that graph that we saw for part B, or part C above, just in case you were wondering. <laughs> All right, so, but that's that's totally not required. You do not have to do a QQ plot. That was just for fun. So there's our, our results and our answer. So if I move this over, we can write that down. So our result is 199.54, Five, five, four, six. So one ninety nine point five four six. And you're putting parentheses around it because it's an interval. Um, that's mathematical notation, basically saying all the values between these two numbers, two hundred sixteen point three five four. Now remember, this isn't percentages. This is pounds, right? This has a unit, so we could put pounds after the whole interval, or you can put pounds after each of those items, right? But one way or another, it's pounds. All right, now what about the calculator? Well, the calculator is T interval. So stat tests T interval, which is number eight, so I can just hit eight. But I would go over to the left and choose data, just like I did with um, stat crunch. So I have data, I actually have the raw data sitting in L1, not L3. So I hit second one, because in blue above number one is L1. And I go down to my confidence level. Just always leave the frequency at one. Don't worry about that. It just means each of your data points occurred once. So that's fine. So 95 confidence level, go down to calculate and press enter. And we get the same answers. A little bit more rounded than we got out of StatCrunch, but nevertheless, they're the same. Now, what does this mean for NBA players? Ah, let's do a little interpret piece. Now remember that interpretation, we have a box, we have a little script for it that we learned in section 9.1 and that script hasn't changed. It's on this page that has the graph with all the stuff, right? So it'll be we are blah percent confident that the parameter, which we'll have to write out the context, that's where all the work is, is between that lower number and upper number. All right, so what are we talking about here? We're talking about the average, because this is the mean, and this would be the pounds, it'd be the weight for NBA players. So we are 95% confident that the mean weight, the average weight or mean weight of all NBA players, technically, if we restricted our population to the 2019-20 season, then we should say that for the 2019 to 20 season. Although you can imagine this is probably very similar to seasons around that. Um, so the average, the mean weight, the average weight, so you could say average here and that's fine. I know it's a terrible word, but we use it. So the mean weight of all NBA players for the 2019-2020 season. So all of that is describing you. If you're describing your parameter, with context, All right? That's the hard part, right? Describing that parameter mu, it's a parameter because it's a population value, right? So you're describing it and we think it's between, so we think that the mean weight is between, I know it seems weird because NBA players is plural, but the mean is the subject of the sentence, right? The mean weight is between 199.55 pounds and 216.35 pounds. If you want to keep extra decimal places there, that's fine too. There's the lower number, there's the upper number, and we're including units, right? You can use units where appropriate. So if your problem has units, then use them. The proportion ones from section 9.1 only have percents. So you can make them percents and that's about it, right? Whereas these ones have units, units like pounds, inches, feet, pressure, it would be measured in millimeters of mercury, you know, things like that. All right, and so now we know how to find the confidence interval for a mean and for a proportion. And for a mean, we know how to do it two ways. One with a data set, like this particular one was, and one with a summary where it's all written out in a big paragraph and we have to figure it all out ourselves. So we can now discern between the two and do both of them if required.